Okay, so I know I said that Stardust Speedway was probably my favorite zone in the game, but honestly, I feel like Metallic Madness might actually be my favorite. So, Metallic Madness is most certainly the final zone of the game, because man, this place is fully mechanized and we're in the present. So, Metallic Madness itself is a pretty good tile set, fantastic music, and some decent level design. Uh, terrible enemies, though. I don't like those fans. <laughs> those fans are the worst. Uh, the other enemies are fine, though. But anyway, yeah, uh... The level design's okay. I feel like some parts are a little too mazy, and there are a whole lot of sections that are just sort of locked off. I think the past especially has some just areas that will stop you from really making any progress at all. Which isn't great. Uh, we're done with Act 1, but Act 1's not too bad. Act 2, on the other hand, I think... Oh yeah, it would have to be the uh, main concentration of mazes. I know what Act 3 looks like. So, one of the things I really do appreciate about Metallic Madness, though, is that it really does a good job of making a difference between all of the uh, tile sets, past, present, and the futures. I mean, all of the rounds in the game do, yes, but Metallic Madness as a final level feels really cool because it's very representative of sort of the way the tone works in this game. Oh man, that's a big bomb. Uh, you know, obviously you've got this terrible base, which is, you know, Sonic CD's kind of, I don't want to say darker, it feels like the wrong word, it's not really dark and edgy, but it sort of inches close to that in tone, and Metallic Madness Present fits that pretty well. The past, of course, uh, the base is being built, so that's a just a really neat feature that you can see the base before it's actually completed. But most importantly, I love the difference between the futures so much. This, of course, is the good future, and man, if you manage to get the good future for the final level, it really drives the point home of, hey, you saved this place, because you saw what Metallic Madness just looked like, right? You know, it was already Robotnik's base in the present, but if you save the future, it actually looks really lovely. Oh, also Mini Sonic. Look at him. Mini Sonic's adorable. I hate this section because it's a weird maze that's kind of confusing. I forget where, but there's some part that I find tricky for some reason. But look at Mini Sonic, he's adorable. But uh, anyway, yeah, uh, it really sells the fact that you've saved the world here. Obviously, we still need to beat Robotnik in whatever final robot he's cooked up, but, like, you got the Time Stones. You've pretty much got this, and I really do just love how peaceful this future is because of that. We won't be seeing it in this episode, but of course, the bad future is the exact opposite in so many ways, especially if you're playing the Japanese version, because uh, the song is really good. Uh, anyway, here's a Tetris section? Falling block? Well, it, it's just a falling blo block section. It's not Tetris. They don't disappear if you line them up. Well, I mean, technically it never completes a line, so who knows. But uh, anyway, that's actually the end of the stage. Thankfully, in a successful take, you really didn't see any of my frustrations here, so, eh, that's good. <laughs> I like not watching frustrating footage. So, I should mention this real quick, but, um, in the remake of this game, the Christian Whitehead remake, uh, there was originally supposed to be one final, uh, quote-unquote round uh, if you collected all the time stones. Uh, naturally, it would have apparently just been a boss. However, uh, the design looks super cool. 
the boss, you know, it's your standard large Eggman robot design, but nonetheless, it's pretty neat. But apparently, it would have actually been a robot that was invincible in its current form. So you would have had to time warp during the battle in order to do damage to it, which is such a cool concept. Like, man, I would have played that version if that had made it into the final product because that would be such a cool finale and would have been a really fitting end to this game about time travel. It would work really well. Instead, however, we get this. So Metallic Madness's boss is a fan. Robotnik's just in a pod with fan blades on it. And I feel like if you wait, he will do an attack that actually makes him vulnerable. So you can, you know, hit him without getting hit yourself. But this boss is kind of boring as it is. Like, even Sonic 1's boss was kind of, well, actually, no it wasn't. <laughs> this is on par with Sonic 1's final boss. Because it's just sort of a standard design. It doesn't really do anything unique. It doesn't look special. This could just be any other zone's boss. It does get its own theme, which is, you know, which is actually also called Final Fever, just like the, uh, theoretical final zone in the remake. Oh, also, uh, look at his pod. See the letters C and D in that? I mean, you don't anymore, but, uh, before he exploded, you can see the letters C and D in it, because it's Sonic CD. But anyway, yeah, a little bit of a lackluster final boss, but then again, most of the bosses in this game were. Also, if I remember correctly, the US version actually just uses the standard boss theme for that, further emphasizing that it's just sort of there. Eggman really wasn't feeling it today. So the mountain that I guess Eggman carved out explodes, and the little planet is free. And that star effect looks really cool. You ever have a planet just thank you by shedding stars everywhere and also exploding tiny little particles into the shape of your face? Honestly, little planet, you're pretty rad. You really know how to make somebody feel good for saving you. And that's Sonic CD, so... As I've mentioned, it's really not my favorite Sonic game at all. I think the level design's kind of lackluster. I think that a lot of the tile sets are neat, but they're a little bit busy as well. That doesn't really help me in this game. It's kind of visually... Maybe not a mess, because I've seen visual messes. This is just uh, a little bit much. I don't know if I'd quite say gaudy, but it is a little much at the very least. I also don't really care for the time travel mechanics. I don't know how I would really prefer them, you know, to be implemented. I can certainly say that I don't care for the robot generators as a concept, but... I don't know, even time traveling in stages doesn't work great? I do kind of want a game that maybe implements it a little more than, like, Sonic Mania, because Sonic Mania was just one act is in the present, and then you hit one of the time gates and you time travel, but that's between acts, so it's more of a fan y kind of thing. So yeah, I don't entirely know how I'd prefer it, I just know I don't like it mechanically. I do think aesthetically and tonally they get a pretty good point across. Again, Metallic Madness is really good. Uh, it, it's a, a really good example of that because there is such a major difference between all of the different time periods. It really evokes different feelings. And like, obviously, 
the shifting colors and tile sets between time periods uh, usually evoke a little bit of that, uh, just not as strongly as in Metallic Madness. Though obviously, all the bad futures have such a good tile set, and I know I've made this point, you know, at least a few times, but uh, it feels weird saying that, you know, that these terrible, ruined futures are cool, but like, they are hideous, just in a really on-purpose Pleasing's not the right word. <laughs> it, you know, it's purposeful, it's supposed to evoke a very specific feeling, and it does. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, music's good. Did I already mention that in the credits? I should. So there you go if I didn't. But uh, other than that, I think that's all I have to talk about. So this has been Sonic CD. I've been Fefner, and I'll see you next time for whatever I do next. And of course, I should say... You're too cool. <laughs>